already have a personal brand tonight. What tonight is about is about you taking responsibility and ownership of that brand. Are you famous for what you want to be famous for? And I would strongly encourage you, before you leave here tonight, send out six or seven SMSs. Choose a wide variety of people. Choose people who you, you know quite well. Colleagues, clients, whoever, whoever they are. And say to them, I've just been through a personal branding networking exercise. And if you had to describe me in one word, what would that word be? Because personal branding, the secret is clarity. And in that clarity process, getting other people's feedback is very important because often how we see ourselves and how other people see us are not necessarily the same way. So that's why probably the truth lies somewhere in the middle. The more consistent you are as a brand, the more people begin to trust you. What thing sits on your shoulder that prevents your brand going to the next level? We all have them. They're behavioral in nature. And they're often things that you become famous for. Like you're always late. It can be that you don't get back to people. It can be the way you look. It can be the way you sound. No-name brands are people who rely on their technical expertise to take their career to the next level. They believe their technical expertise should be enough. It's actually who you know, who they know, and who knows about you. Because if no one knows about how wonderful you are, then your brand is invisible. And be very aware of that the next time you sit in front of your computer and you're eating at your computer and you're never getting up and you're refusing invitations, you run the risk of becoming a no-name brand. What do you think the point is around your brand? Be yourself, exactly. Be real. Don't try and be someone who you're not. But people have got great radars to pick up inauthentic behavior. Your personal brand is you squared. It's the best you that you can be. But if you're an introvert, be the best introvert you can be. If you are a wild extrovert, then sometimes you actually need to tame that slightly down, but be that best, best extrovert. If you're not a golfer, don't try and be a golfer. But at the same time, then find your groove. Today is about challenging yourself, but you've got to find your groove too. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn are important brand building tools. I'm less interested in Twitter and Facebook. Facebook is more for your friends. Twitter is a commentary news sharing platform. LinkedIn is the specific tool I want to chat to you briefly about. Up until two years ago, I had not realized the power of LinkedIn. So we were, we, as the networking company, we were asked, been asked about it a lot by our clients. And I hopped on a plane, I went to New York, and I attended the biggest social networking conference in the world. And Jeff Weiner, the CEO of LinkedIn, gave the keynote address. And I have to tell you, I got it. There is a bus coming down this track, and whoever chooses to get onto the bus sooner rather than later is going to be ahead of the pack. Because LinkedIn is a professional peer-to-peer -peer networking tool, and it is incredibly powerful. Did you know that having a photograph, a complete profile, and 500 plus connections are step number one in LinkedIn? There are nine steps to actually build and to really use the power of it. Right, we're now going to move into the networking. So personal branding is the why and networking is the how. In my experience, it takes six years to develop a good network. This is not something that happens overnight. It's about farming. It's about looking after relationships. It's not about hunting. It's not about meeting someone here tonight and immediately doing business with them. It's about really nurturing and harvesting those relationships. It's not that you won't feel the benefit before six years, but after six years, it almost starts to take care of itself. Curiosity is the biggest characteristic of the best networkers. When you are curious, you'll be amazed where that can take you. And when I say curious, it's not just about the so-called decision makers. You're curious about the security guards in your building. You're so curious about the tea ladies. When you go to restaurants, you get to know who waitresses are. The best networkers are incredibly generous with all their resources. They give generously because they almost know that they're putting a life principle into work. They will get back. They may not get back from that person, but they will get back from somebody else. And if you are and very fearful with your resources, I can guarantee you, you will not be a good network. So increasingly, we need to understand this about how women and men operate, because we network across genders. So men need to understand, when you're trying to build relationships with women, business relationships, you've got to do some emotional depositing, because that's how women operate. I feel that because I haven't gone out for coffee with Ziggy, we haven't, um, I haven't found out about her life, I feel then because there's no emotional deposit, I'd be abusing the relationship by trying to restore. Whereas men are better the acquaintance network. And ladies, I hope there's a little light bulb moment going off above your head. 
because we've got to get better at the acquaintance network. I've got to realize it's absolutely fine to phone the gee. In turn, I'm opening the networking gateway, and hopefully at some later stage, she then phones me and asks for help. Small talk leads to big talk, and small talk is something that people really battle with. If you are reading regularly, then you are already at an advantage. And when I say reading regularly and broadly, from Nose Week to Sunday World to You Magazine, those are the kind of things you should be reading, because across the board gives you great stuff to talk about. Remembering people's names is a huge issue. Now, I would like to introduce you to the rule of three. If you repeat somebody's name three times in a conversation, do you know that's how it creates the neural pathways in your brain? So when you meet someone for the first time, you repeat their name. During the conversation, you repeat their name again, and when you leave, the problem is we pronounce it, we repeat it once or twice, and what, that is not enough. Three times is the magic number. There are two things that charming people do. They remember people's names, and they know how to listen. If you are doing all the talking when you're out networking, you are not doing good networking. And that's often why introverts are, in fact, better networkers than extroverts. Right, we are now going to focus on the last tool I want to chat to you about tonight, and probably one of the most important is your elevator speech. So, if you jumped into a lift between floor two and floor four, and someone says to you, what do you do? Do you have that short sentence that encapsulates what you do? And the key part of it, it needs to focus on your listener, not on you. A good one is fast. It describes the benefits to who you're meeting. And lastly, it's interesting enough to make your listener want to find out more. The best one I ever heard was told to me by a data capturer. She said, I am the underwire bra of the organization. Because she saw herself as supporting what everybody else did. So she's taken a very boring job and she's made it sound sexy and interesting. So I'm sure none of you in this room have boring jobs, so you can make it sound very interesting. My one is, my name is Helen Nicholson. I specialize in teaching people how to network so that entrepreneurs can grow their businesses, so that corporates can develop powerful personal, personal brands. You ideally need three um, so that, depending on who you're meeting. So this is the formula. I'm this, I do this, so that. Now what comes after the elevator speech? Following up. Do you know that I will get emails from 3% of you? 97% of people do not follow up, and I promise you that that is true. And that's often why introverts have an edge. Keep records, so whether it's an old-fashioned Rolodex, a business card scanner, business card file, but have a system. So when I get someone's business card at a function like this, before I leave that venue in my car, I'll write down the name, the date of the function, and the type of function it was, and I'll say red frizzy hair like cycling, or something about that person, because otherwise I guarantee you in six months' time you will not remember who that person was. Are you a networking criminal? Networking criminals don't rock up to events, so you clearly are not networking criminals. They don't have business cards with them at all times. So, uh, today you're allowed a free pass, but after today it's gone. And networking criminals don't follow up. So if you think of what we've chatted about in this presentation, we started off, we looked at your personal brand. Send out those SMSs. Say to people, if you had to describe me in one word, what would that word be? What is your coffee stain? on your brand. The more consistent you are, the more people are going to begin to trust you. Are you a no-name brand? What is your LinkedIn brand looking like? We looked at the two biggest characteristics of good networkers, curiosity and abundance, open hand. Men and women network very differently. When you go to functions, look for groups of three, stand on the side, break in, do good small talk, do an amazing elevator speech and follow up. That is pretty much the skill set. This is not rocket science. This is actually very simple, but don't confuse simplicity with lack of power. It's a simple skill, but it's a very, very powerful skill. Reputation, reputation, reputation. Johannesburg, South Africa, Africa, and the world is a very small place. If you abuse the trust of a network, it will follow you around. Make sure that your personal brand is something that always remains intact. And I love this quote. No one ever erected a statue to a getter. It's the givers who are remembered and celebrated. And if you go out there and approach your network with an open hand, thinking, what can I give, not what can I get, you will be destined for amazing success. Thank you, everyone.